Hello guys and gals, and welcome to another episode of Upgraded Sets. Today we're going to be looking at a Korean set. If you guys didn't know this, um, Heaven's Brethren is actually a uh, sort of a code word, or I don't, I don't know. It's, it's like a nod toward a uh, sort of a Korean aspect of uh, their culture. Uh, Heaven's Brethren refers to several uh, pieces of the Heaven's Brethren. If you've never looked up Heaven's Brethren before, um, might be fun to do so. But I'm going to give you a brief, a brief overview. So Hamosa's adamant, a Hamos, Hamosu's adamant. The armor was excavated from Number Thirty Two Tomb in Goryong. Long iron plates are attached by nailing. The fact that this type of arrows armors were found in other regional areas means that it's quite popular during the Three Kingdoms period. To protect the warrior's head, the helmet is angular in the center of the front, and also the lower part of the helmet was composed of three iron plates to protect the neck. Uh, in Gaia, armor has not only practical function, but also symbolic meaning of power. The picture shows the front and back of the rusted item, and the helm is gone. Uh, Dangun's teaching. Um, this one in particular was... Um, never really kind of figured out um, it's it might not even be a weapon as far as I can tell um, I kind of did a little bit of research into it and I couldn't really figure it out uh, Taybox Glory on the other hand um, is actually a roof tile I believe uh, it has a beast designed on it with a symbolic meaning uh, leading a peaceful life without any disease and uh, and any evil spirits uh, big eyes full of fire, a strong turned up nose, and sharp dog teeth and a horn on the forehead are scary enough to dispel an evil spirit. Uh, this type of roof tile is called a roof tile with goblin design or a roof tile with dragon design. Uh, it is usually installed at the edge of the ridge of the roof. The roof tile was excavated from an Anapji, an artificial pond that was built in 674 and attached to the East Palace where a Scylla crowned prince stayed. Uh, in this pond, some tens of thousands of artifacts were found, including bowls and everyday life tools and many roof tiles. These roof tiles were for protecting the palace from the crown, where a crown prince stayed from evil spirits. It's very interesting. So it's fun, it's fun to find out that it was actually a roof tile and not actually a shield. But it could shield you from evil spirits, apparently. Um, Ondal's Almighty, uh, this golden crown was excavated from the north tomb of, I uh, can't even pronounce that name, in uh, Gyeong, Gyeongju. In north tomb, more ornaments, including a silver belt ornament with an inscription of uh, Buindai, the meaning of Madam's belt, were found then in the south tomb. In this sense, the North Tomb can be presum presumed to have belonged to a woman. The gold crown indicates the owner's political and social class. Um, so very interesting. And um, uh, there's dangling jade ornaments, apparently, from it. Uh, apparently there were three similar crowns excavated in separate tombs of speculating king, queen, prince. The displayed crown sense is called the Madam's belongs to this supposed queen. The king and prince look alike, resembling Andal's almighty, except the prince's is smaller and shorter. Imagine tall gold plates weighing on your forehead. Uh, the horizontal rim goes around just above your eyes, and be glad at least it's symmetrical, a beautiful piece. Um, so it's kind of interesting that the source of Heaven's Brethren is a series of Korean legends, but uh, the, the actual truth is they kind of took real examples from archaeological digs. Uh, the helmet, uh, the, sorry, the the crown, Andal's Almighty, is an actual crown that apparently a prince, princess wore. Um, the shield is a roof tile that apparently was on a prince's roof. And the armor is a rather common armor apparently around that time period, um, not including the helmet. And uh, unfortunately, I don't think anyone's ever actually found out what the what the mace is, which is probably not even a mace. Uh, without further ado, though, let's get into the set, shall we? All right, so first off, let's go over the uh, Dangun's Teaching Reinforced Mace. 
Uh, Dangoon's teaching reinforced mace is 41 to 185 damage, and this is because it has an effect uh, that allows it to um, increase its damage based on character level of 1.5 per character level up to a maximum of 136. Uh, sorry, 148, my bad. I'm, uh, I'm not level 99, I'm level 91. Um, it also has 10% chance to cast level 3 Frost Nova on striking, which is relatively low damage. It's like 20 damage on the cold damage. Um, the real effect of the level 3 Frost damage on striking is that it's going to chill everything nearby. That's uh, so it's going to be a very nice AoE chill, which is going to be proccing all the time. And it's always nice to have an AoE chill. Uh, we also have 40% increased attack speed on this, which is very, very nice. That means it's going to be attacking very quickly. Uh, we have uh, the 136 maximum damage on this, which uh, does go up and down with character level. So, of course, at level 68, when you can put this on, at 68 times 1.5. So that's how much you're going to add to the damage on this weapon. Uh, now, of course, we also have a fire damage bonus here of 20 to 30, and 50% uh, damage to undead, which is, of course, because it's a mace weapon. Um, you can, of course, put one socket into this if you want to. Uh, maybe speed it up even further with a shale rune or something like that. It uh, really depends on you. Um, it's actually a kind of a decent weapon to find if you don't have anything else um, and can be useful until you find something better. Um, now, Dangoon, uh, whoever he is, I have not been able to find any kind of story on Dangoon. So, uh, unfortunately, I don't really know what Dangoon is. Uh, each one of these seems to be named after a particular person, and I actually do have some stories on the other ones, but for some reason or another, I can't find anything on Dangoon's teaching. And I'd be more than happy to hear if any of you guys know what Dangoon's teaching is supposed to be, uh, what it actually is supposed to represent, and uh, who the actual person is, maybe the legend that is supposed to be behind Dangoon, I'd like to know. So please write it down in the comments. Uh, we also have Ondol's Almighty Spired Helmet, uh, which is a... Uh, very high-level item. Uh, the Spired Helmet is, uh, is of course, the maximum elite version of these helmets. And uh, it does have 209 defense on it. It uh, has 10% chance to cast level 3 weaken, which is going to be 33% uh, plus 3, which is 36% negative to the monster's um, a damage when they go to swing at you. It's physical damage, by the way. Uh, or attack you with a bow. And uh, the only downside to this is that, um, you know, it does have to be cast on them before it uh, has an effect. And 10% chance to cast is actually pretty nice. Um, this is actually really good because it does stack with damage reduction. So if I had 50% damage reduction, for instance, and a monster is swinging at me with weaken, their 1,000 damage, if they have 1,000 damage, is reduced by 36%. Then the, the remainder goes against my 50% damage reduction for another 50% off of whatever they're doing. And that means I'm going to take far less damage. So for instance, if I were to have only 50% damage reduction and a monster hit me for 1,000 damage, that would be minus 50%, which is of course 500. Um, however, if I add in weaken, so 1,000 damage minus 33 36%, it's going to be 900 and... Uh, sorry. <laughs> It's going to be 640, and then minus another 50% means that 1,000 is going to go down to 320. So instead of taking 500 damage, I'm going to take 320 damage, which is a lot better than taking 500. Um, a lot of the times people don't like this, though, because they don't want it to overwrite other beneficial curses, like they don't want it to overwrite um, life tap, they don't want it to overwrite lower resistance, they don't want it to overwrite, uh, you know... Uh, various things like Decrepify and, and whatnot that they would have running besides this. Uh, we also have 24% faster hit recovery, uh, which is always nice to have on an item, uh, no matter what character you're on. Plus 50 to defense, plus 10 to strength, plus 15 to dexterity. Both strength and dexterity are very useful. Uh, dex, of course, will help you put on some armor. and uh, or Sorry, strength will help you put on armor. And dexterity, of course, will give you higher block chance, increase your attack rating, and so forth and so on. They're both nice to have. And, of course, because this is a Spired Helmet, supposedly it would have really high strength requirements, but it doesn't because it has negative 40% requirements on it. Uh, so it, it goes really low down to 116. Now, I do actually have some information on Ondol, and I thought this would be kind of interesting. So um, Ondol is actually a word that means stupid. Um, apparently, he's uh, he was not a very uh, smart person. Um, 
So the story goes something like this. Um, Andal is a poor but good-hearted man. He begs for food to support his mother, earning him the name Pabo, stupid, which means Andal. Um, <laughs> the king had a young princess who kept crying, and like many parents of today, he threatened to marry her off to stupid Andal if she keeps crying. After 13 years of abuse, the princess demands the king to keep his word by marrying her to Andal instead of a prince from another clan. The king refuses. She, so she stole some valuable ornaments and left the palace, and she sought her way to Andal's home, uh, married him, and sold the ornaments to alleviate their poverty. Subsequently, she gave Andal wise advice on various occasions, finally enabling him to become a favored gentleman under the, her father, the king. He then volunteered to fight back Scylla invaders, vowing never to, re to return until the land was defended. Ironically, Scylla is the empire that made the Andal Almighty look alike a crown. He died in battle and was to be moved back to the capital, but his funeral carriage wouldn't budge. Only when the princess came, touching the coffin, said, Life and death has been decided. Let's return home, did the hearse move. That's the, uh, the history, or the, the, the legend of Andal. Um, I'd like to know the legend of Dangun, but I don't have that one. Uh, the next item on our list is Hasura's, or sorry, uh, Himosa's Adamant, which is 702 defense, uh, 52 strength requirement, level 44, and this one can actually be upgraded. Uh, 500 defense bonus on this, just flat, 40 defense versus missile, or very melee, 35 defense versus missile, 75 to life, and negative 20% requirements. Now, this one um, also has a story, I believe. Uh, so, Hemoso, Hemosu was the founder of the first Dangun of Bu Buyo. Uh, Dangun means ruler. Legend says his Zhumong uh, founded Gorgio. I can't pronounce any of these words. He was the son of heaven. Um, riding on a chariot of five dragons, arriving at uh, Holsengol Siong in 58 BC to establish. Buck Buyeo, pretty boring, right? It only goes uh, to portray heaven like some alien spaceship uh, that does nothing but reproduce. It's a, it's a very odd uh, legend. I don't really, even not ever really even sure about this one at all. Um, we also have uh, Taybox Glory. Uh, so Taybox Glory Ward Shield is defense 220. Uh, chance to block, 75%. And I do have to go over this uh, specifically because the chance to block is different for each character. So it's 79% um, for Paladins. It's 74% for um, Amazon, Assassin, and Barbarian. And it's 69% for Sorceress, uh, Necromancer, and Druid. Um, it is indestructible, which is very interesting. It has 185 strength requirement, which is really high. Uh, and uh, it's because it's a ward shield. And it's really kind of odd to me because they threw negative 40% requirements on the helmet. They threw negative 20% requirements on the armor, but didn't throw any negative requirements on the shield, which is probably the highest strength requirement piece in the whole set now because of it. Um, it does have 30% faster block rate and 25% increased chance of blocking, uh, but because of the really high strength requirement, not a lot of people are going to utilize this. It has 50 to defense, added flat, 100 to mana, which I'm not really sure why a shield with such high strength requirement would have a big bonus to mana like that, but it is a really big bonus to mana. Uh, lightning resistance, 30% on this, and attacker takes damage of 30. Uh, attacker takes damage of 30 is really high, but at level 81, it's nothing. Um, it's it's a, a pinprick. And uh, all in all, the set is rather odd. Uh, let's look at the uh, bonuses here. So we do get a uh, two-piece bonus of 10% uh, lifesteal. And uh, we get a three-piece three bonus of uh, replenish life plus 30, which is a lot. That is a lot of replenish life. And uh, maximum fire damage based on character level of uh, 237, uh, which is actually based on character level. So if we divide that out, um, I'm currently level 91. This is a new effect, by the way. We don't actually know what this is. Uh, so 273, is that what it said? Yeah, 273. 
uh, divided by 91, and we are looking at 3 per level. So 3 per level fire damage, uh, all the way up to level 99, which would be 297 fire damage added. Uh, it's very interesting. And then uh, for full bonus, we get the uh, the full set bonus, which is plus two to all skills, the fire damage, the life steal, uh, the replenish life 30, which uh, stays the same. Replenish life 30 is a lot. Uh, all resistance is 50. Uh, damage reduced by 24% on this, which is definitely new. Um, we also have cannot be frozen and, uh, and plus five to light radius. Uh, the new things that they added to this are... They added plus 10 on the Replenish Life. They also took Replenish Life off of the full bonus. It used to be on the full bonus, and they put it on the um, on the three-piece bonus, uh, which it was not there before. Um, they also took the uh, two-piece bonus away. The two-piece bonus used to be heal stamina plus 50%. Uh, they took it away and turned it into uh, plus 10% lifesteal. So very interesting. And... Um, the Replenish Life is 10 points higher now than it was before, uh, which is definitely very nice. I mean, they definitely did something to the set. They did something to the set. They beefed it up a little bit, right? So they added Lifesteal, which was a good move. They added um, 10 to Replenish Life to make it more what it was doing before. Um, and they added 24% damage reduction on here, which is a lot of damage reduction. Um, I'm not really sure that 24% is worth the um, pieces that you're giving up, but um, but it's definitely nice. I just can't, for the life of me, see using this set in um, 2.3 because the weapon is tying the entire thing down. But we do have the opportunity to upgrade the weapon and the armor. We cannot upgrade the shield or the helmet. Um, so let's uh, test this out. First, we're going to make sure that we can't upgrade the uh, shield of the helmet, because why not? Um, I know I can't, but uh, but as you can see, uh, it does nothing. And... Does nothing. Alright, so, we can upgrade the armor and the weapon. Let's check the armor first. So the Hamosa's Adamant Curios is 702 defense, 52 strength, level 44. And it goes to Hamosa's Adamant Great Hauberg. Uh, which is 936 defense, uh, 95 strength, level 63. You know, I'm going to be honest, it's not exactly an absolutely awful upgrade, but it did lose its special graphic, which is a little sad. Um, I mean, if you were using this set, why not? Um, the level requirement on the original piece was only 44, um, so going from 44 to 63 wasn't that big of a deal. The strength requirement from uh, 52 to 95 wasn't even that big of a bump. I mean, if you really wanted to upgrade this, you could, but a lemon co is pretty expensive. This is the one that I'm really interested in, and this is going to be a Paul alum and a perfect emerald. So this one is going to go from 41 to 185. 41 to 185. Uh, 46 dex, 145 strength, level 68. Actually, you know, does this even upgrade? It doesn't upgrade. I'm a big silly head. Even I forget the names of the items sometimes. I thought it was something that could upgrade, but it's not. So we really only have one item to upgrade on this set at, at all. Um, by the way, Taybok. I don't even know if I found any information on Taybok. I don't think so. I'm pretty sure Taybox uh, was not something that I found any information on. So if you have any information on Taybox, that would be interesting too. I have to wonder though, um, because I do feel like there had to have been a story behind each one of these items. Uh, Taybox, Glory, um, Andal's Almighty, Hamosa's Adamant, and Dangun's Teaching. Um, it's also very interesting because Andal wasn't almighty. Um, according to his story, he was stupid, and he didn't really do much of anything. Um, maybe Andal's almighty is referring to his princess, um, who who seemed like the winner of that story. Um, and Hamosa's uh, didn't really seem very adamant either. Um, 
so I'm not really sure if Dangoon was a teacher or Tabak had glory. Uh, yeah. Um, who all could use this uh, set? Well, it has a melee weapon and it has a shield, and the shield is relatively high strength requirement, which really kind of limits this set to only a couple characters. Um, if you're running really high strength requirement, you're probably going to be either a paladin, a barbarian, or a, uh, a druid. I can't really think of any other characters who would have 185 strength um, to wear this set. Um, if you take out the shield, I mean, the, the strength requirement does go down quite a bit to 145, which is a lot more doable. Uh, but you do lose the majority of the bonuses of the set. Um, I don't know. It does seem to be a very defensive set. The weaken, combined with the regeneration... Combined with the lifesteal, combined with the resistances, combined with the damage reduction, combined with the cannot be frozen, all of which lead me to be pointing toward, and even the Frost Nova is a very defensive set. It is extremely defensive. You have an AoE chill, which is going to be going off all the time. The monsters are going to be constantly weakened with the level 3 weakened that you're going to be procking. So you've got two procs here. Um, you also have cannot be frozen on the set. You've got damage reduction on the set. You've got in, uh, replenished life on the set. You've got all resistances on the set. Life steal on the set. And every single thing about this set seems to be pointing me toward a very highly defensive set. And um, I only wish it was a little bit more defensive because then maybe it might have a, a, a nice spot in the, uh, in the light. Um, the damage reduced by 24 was a really nice gesture by the developers to make this set a little bit more viable. But the problem is, is that you're giving up the shield slot, which can potentially be damage reduced by 35% from a monarch shield, uh, the uh, storm shield. Um, you're giving up your helmet slot, which is pretty much any chance you have of doing things like uh, G-Face or Andoril's Visage, which is plus to skills and so forth and so on. So you're giving up a potential plus two to skill here, a plus two to skill here, Right, so that's plus four. You're also giving up plus two to skills here, which is plus six, and you're giving up potentially plus three to skills here, which is seven, eight, nine. So you're giving up plus nine to skills for plus two. You're giving up thirty-five percent damage reduction for twenty-four percent. You're giving up, um, you know, um, it just it seems like you give up a little bit too much to put this set on. I also feel like in keeping with the entire idea that this set has negative requirements on it. Taybox Glory needs negative requirements on it, too. They need to throw a negative 20% or a negative 40% on Taybox Glory um, to really match it up with the rest of the set. Because what is the point of the helmet having negative 40% and the armor having negative 20% and then the shield not? It really ties the entire set down, and, uh, and I don't like it. Um, Taba, uh, on, on Dolls Almighty could be useful on a mercenary to help keep him alive. Uh, if you happen to find one of these, you could throw him on there for the weaken on striking. Um, it could be useful on a uh, on a melee merc, so either an Act 2 merc or a Barbarian merc. Um, could definitely be useful. It might also be useful on a, uh, a ranged merc, specifically for the weaken. But it doesn't offer a lot specifically for a mercenary. Uh, the plus 10 strength could be useful in allowing him to equip a piece of armor or a weapon that he might not otherwise be able to equip. And the faster hit recovery could certainly be useful for the mercenary as well. Um, I mean, I, I find Hemosis adamant a lot of the times, and I'll put it on a Merc early game. Because it is a relatively high defense armor. It has bonus life on it. Um, it's, it's pretty easy to put on them. And you could put a two-piece on a Merc, and he'll get 10% lifesteal which I think would be pretty good for a mercenary. Um, obviously, you can't put three pieces. I mean, you could put three pieces on an Act 3 Merc, but I don't really see the point in that. And uh, the Act 3 Merc is not going to have enough strength to use the shield anyway. It doesn't matter. Hmm. Not really sure what to say about this set. I'd be interested to hear what you guys think of the changes to this set. Uh, what do you think about that uh, damage reduced by 24%? Uh, what do you think about the... Uh, the extra replenished life they added, the life steal they added. Uh, what do you think about that maximum fire damage that was added? That wasn't uh, that wasn't there before. Um, there's a lot of things that they added to the set. Some things they took away, like the heal stamina. Definitely glad they did that. 
I think all in all, the set is in a better place than it was before, but I just feel like it's still not quite good enough. It certainly is unique looking, though. I'm going to give you that much. It certainly has a very, a very unique look to it. And this video has gone on long enough, so I'm going to end it here. Uh, as always, I do appreciate you guys and gals watching my videos, uh, even when we are talking about a set from heaven. And as always, keep watching.